What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. I'm very excited today and humbled and privileged to be joined by an amazing man, Dr. Bear Lando. Bear, how are you, brother? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me here, and good to see you again. We had a great so guys, chat with me, you on our podcast. So let me let me explain to who who this man is. Uh, Dr. Lando is literally one of the original visionaries in the consciousness, truth, uh, uh, you know what I call the cosmic awareness movement. I mean, it is a true honor for him to be on my show here today. I mean, this guy is a legend for people who are you know in this space, which now is where I really only want to be. And as he said, I was on his podcast recently with his podcast co-partner, Mike, uh, the Alpha Vedic podcast, and it was profound. And I was like, I really want you guys to come on my podcast. So here he is today. Uh, As I said, today uh, is January 20th for a a record of like where we are. Let me give you guys his uh, bio, which is again, prolific. He is the founder and formulator for Alpha Vedic. He has traveled an eclectic path through athletics and academics and becoming a physician, a biotrain specialist, and permaculture farmer. Dr. Lando was both a pre-law and a pre-medicine undergraduate student recognized for maintaining a 4.0 GPA as a Division I scholarship football player, so he used to hit people, uh, and a competitive power lifter. His lifelong passion for the martial arts and surfing would eventually lead to studies in Chinese medicine and other alternative therapies. While raising his family in exotic locations from Fiji to Hawaii, that's amazing, in search of better waves. The whole world is searching for better waves, right? After completing graduate studies in social psychology, he earned MICP certification from Stanford, of all places, the number one CIA recruiting center in the world, uh, and then attended <laughs> naturopathic college for the curriculum of emphasis in oriental medicine and classic classical homeopathy. Seeking a stronger foundation in musculoskeletal medicine, he completed a doctor of chiropractic. Like I said, this is a very advanced and eclectic man, as he says in his bio, uh, graduating cum laude and kinesiology diploma status. He is very noted amongst his peers for his innovative clinical strategies and developed an international following for people suffering from chronic degenerative conditions, seeking his services as a bioterrain medicine and functional movement specialist. Now, by the way, he is a, ma- a very advanced man and soul, and we are going to talk about bioterrain in a second if you don't know what that means. In more recent years, he earned his Master Gardener and Permaculture Design Certification and presently oversees his off-grid medicinal herb farm while teaching biodynamic farming methods and ionization soil analysis. He is retired from clinical medical practice. No. And remain, but he does remain active in the internal martial arts, health consulting, and creating formulations for his herbal company and developing innovative medical protocols based on principles of waveform physics. Because as Doc knows, we are nothing more than standing waves and vibrating particles of the divine mind. And so that's an amazing uh, bio. I can't live up to that anymore. But I do want to ask you, before we get into the points that we're going to talk about, because again, it's kind of relevant. Um, 
we're now almost in February of 2022. The world is in complete chaos. Where do you see? We talked a little about this on our podcast, but I'll, you know, I'll advance the conversation. We all three, meaning, you know, your podcast partner, Mike, we all three agree that the world is going to create a golden age, a new earth. We're on the path. We're in the process. But where are we, Doc, as far as what is going to happen in the next two to three years before we get closer to the new earth? Well, uh, first off, I'm honored to be here with you, Jay. And uh, thanks again. Uh, Always delightful to talk to you. Um, You know, I strongly believe on a number of levels that we're already in the golden age. And that is the reason why the predator class is right now throwing the kitchen sink at us because they are doing everything to, uh, you know, dampen our, uh, let's just say, perspective bandwidth to keep us from the realization that that's, in fact, where we're already at and that we each one of us have a very important role to play in that and that we have unfathomable potentials that uh, that they are afraid of the most. So. All the chaos we see, of course, we know it's by design. Uh, we were trying to tell people this kind of stuff about 40 years ago, so nothing's a surprise for some of us old timers. Um, but you know, even when you uh, look at um, the term Armageddon, you know, if you go into you know more of those circles, um, Armageddon actually means new beginnings. And you know, when you treat a body that's very sick. Uh, What happens if you do it right? Many of the things come to the surface that made that person sick in the first place. And if you didn't know any better, you'd think things are getting worse. And that's what we're seeing on the planet now is all the ills, all the things that really need to be cleansed are at the surface and in our face. It's kind of ugly. But if you see them for what they are, uh, we have nothing. But, uh, you know, we should be very optimistic where we're at right now. That's beautiful. So I want to get into, and you're the guy to talk about this with, and I know that we have to kind of skirt around what we're talking about, but I think it's important for people where we are now to truly have an awareness, at least for the people that are willing to accept truth. You know, I've been reading some books um, from some Himalayan swamis recently, amazing books. And, you know, their point of the purpose of living is the sincere pursuit of truth, right? Like, the only purpose, I mean, I, I, you know, I never heard it pushed or put in that way, but obviously people like you and I, and people that follow us and listen to us and stuff like that, we're seekers. Like we've always been here with a purpose of like finding out, you know, what is happening. And, and, and then once we find it out, like getting to a place of conscious awareness and acceptance of what is happening and, and to be okay with it. Whereas, as you know, the majority, unfortunately still doesn't want truth. You know, you think of that Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise movie, you can't handle the truth, right? So, uh, I, you know, the first point in, it, I'll, I'll seek this in a second, but the first point is to talk about bioterrain medicine. And I want you to explain that, but the practical application of waveform mechanics to the practice of medicine. I love that. There's a lot of people on my show or listen to me on my audience that can, will understand what we're talking about, but can you kind of deconstruct and, you know, go as deep as you want. A lot of people need to hear this, you know, whether or not they will accept it yet. Right. Uh, it's important that I think we really, truly, you know, de- demystify what the big C is. Um, sure. It's to understand bioterrain medicine would also put that into perspective. Yeah. Uh, because in bioterrain medicine, it's, of course, uh, emanates from... Um, its origins with Bouchamp, who uh, conducted the first experiments to understand the role of microbes in our, you know, personal ecosystem and also yep. the external yep. ecology. And um, he dis well, he didn't disprove it, but let's just say Pasteur came along and out of his uh, work, he plagiarized it and then created the germ theory because he represented certain vested interests. And even though it was debunked, that has lasted all these years. Now, I studied with the original uh, German school that uh, emanated from Bouchamp, and it went through uh, different evolutions, including developing technologies and microscopes where we could prove this in other ways. And what we proved was that 
uh, nature does not create pathogens. In other words, microbes that are designed by nature to attack us or make us sick. And there's no such thing as disease even. In fact, we can uh, really explain in an alternative way why symptoms that are diagnosed as disease exist in the first place. So in biotrain medicine, the first premise is that you treat the body, not a disease. Uh, there's nothing to attack. We don't look at medicine as a biological battlefield. We understand the role of microbes and uh, then we work with them, understanding what they're trying to do in the first place. And if symptoms persist, there is something in their way from just doing that. Now, um, the, the virus situation is a different kind of fabrication because uh, it has never been proven uh, beyond um, theory uh, anything about virus. Uh, I can explain from a lot of things I do what they conjecture to be virus, right. but there's not this thing that creates a disease of any kind of like. So uh, you treat the body, not a disease, and uh, you bring the body back, the ecology back into a systemic balance and an equilibrium, a homeostasis with the external environment and health returns. And that's what I did for 40 years. And, you know, we more than often had very favorable outcomes. Right. Well, okay. So, so to that point though, and, and again, my mm -hmm. audience will listen to, will understand this even more clearly of what you're really talking about. Cause I talk about this all the time. I mean, if we understand that we are not these physical bodies, that we are energy, spiritual energy, you know, again, vibrating particles, standing waves, whatever you want to call it, then how can a energy get sick? How can an energy contract a disease, right? Because energy can't be compacted. It can't be contained. It's infinite and ever expanding. So it's like when you really start understanding that, what you're saying is absolutely logical. It's not even like, it can't be debated, doc. It really can't be debated. But the brainwash from allopathic medicine and science is so overwhelmingly retarded at this point Exactly. And uh, I didn't learn any of this in medical school. Uh, what I did find, you know, uh, our background, you and I, you know, we're, we're uh, gym rats at one time. And, and I think, uh, you know, athletes have a really good perspective on things because you take your own body, you use right. it as a laboratory and you learn a lot through that process. So that shaped yes. a lot of how I thought from the, for the rest of my life through my career. Sure. So if you entertain the idea that the human body is a compression of informational fields. And if you understand, you can explain it from ancient alchemy, uh, from, uh, you know, different scriptures and, and yeah. teachings that have been on the planet forever. You can uh, explain it in waveform physics, uh, you know, so that the Western mind can understand it. But we live in a thought-based universe. Right. And so thoughts are the only possibility of creating those electrical vectors that create the resonance when those vectors polarize and then they step down through different planes and subplanes into that final where the rubber meets the uh, you know the ground that we call the human body which right. is nothing more than a compaction that registers to our physical senses so when we keep an understanding and awareness that we are that original source that is working with the ultimate universal source and given the free will to create as we will then uh, we, we have this column of awareness that goes from top down. Now, what's happened is that has been inverted right. so that, you know, we don't understand that anymore. At least a lot of us do. Some of our, us are trying to remember right now. Right. And so uh, what can happen is there can be overlays on the mental plane that then um, you know, coalesce into that ground. It's literally like a matrix. That's a real true term. And if we have belief systems about illness, about pathogens, and if we allow that to become our prism that universal energy filters through, then that has to outpicture on the ground. It's a matter of uh, resident 
cymatics, you know, you know, mm -hmm. that term where, you know, resonance creates geometry, geometry creates form and function. So if we entertain those belief systems, it has to outpicture in our reality. So a true doctor has to know how to, uh, you know, work with a person on the ground in what we think of as biology, but then also be able to not only manipulate there, but on those other higher planes to kind of dispel the spell, so to speak, because it is a spell. Yes, there is a lot of spell casting going on on this planet, and it has been going on for millennia. Um, so, but back, you know, again, to talk about bioterrain medicine, and, and, and by the way, this is a quote from one of your guys' emails. Uh, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago, I took it. I thought it was fascinating when I read it. Uh, the prevailing climate of contagion fear has placed the germ theory versus bioterrain debate center stage. Unfortunately, the discussion has not evolved beyond the myopic fixation of our microbial eco partners. Again, you already kind of said it, but we'll, I'll say it again. And I always say this myself, but nature does not create pathogens or disease. Okay. And as a, and again, I will always say that God creates perfection. Any life force that comes from source creation frequency is perfect, right? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, again, science does not want to admit that. I mean, I just talked to a doctor who talked to me about DNA poisoning and automatically cancer comes from, at you know, 70 years of age. I mean, it's like, dude, they don't get it. You know, they want to talk about like they get it because again, we're like you said, what they learn is what they know. And they're being taught from this like poisoned well of lack of information. It's mind blowing. Um, but can you kind of just, again, talk a little bit about, you know, we can talk about, uh, what is it? The, um, the electric, not the electric universe. What's uh Furstenberg's book called? Uh, I'm not sure which one you're referring to. Um, the guy that just wrote about the, uh, the electromagnetic poisoning of everybody. Oh, uh, um, Arthur. Yeah, Furstenberg. I know what you're referring to. Yeah. Sorry, whatever. Yeah. Uh, whatever the name uh, was that the rainbow. Is. Yeah, it's the rainbow. I, I will always yeah. say the rainbow universe or the electric rainbow or whatever it's called. But yeah. uh, but that's a very profound book mm -hmm. that proves beyond any credibility of a doubt that this is a frequency uh, encoded world where, you know, the, the again, the cells of our physiological forms, you know, these matter beings that we are as physical beings is are, is being uh, polluted, you know, the organs, everything is being polluted by these dis dissonant, disparate frequencies, which I know you can talk about at a very high level. Um, but isn't that what's really happening with everyone? It is. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. You have circles of people that are very much, um, spiritually oriented, we'll say, but you need to ground that in, you know, we have a physical body, Yes. Really not physical, but as we experience it for a yes. reason, um, it's a capacitor. It's an electrical capacitor right. to receive energy that comes down from above. And so um, that not only receives energy, but it stores it. Now, the reason why we're playing this game in the first place is as that capacitor is just receiving that pure energy, then it is capable of manifesting spirit on this plane of perception. And if our body is polluted or tampered with, with microwave technologies, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals, adulterated foods, um, mind poison through institutionalized learning, all these things create these overlays so that our physical vehicle is not able to receive pure spirit. And of course, that's why they're doing all these things, because they want us to create a different reality from the one we're capable of and the one we all really want to create in the first place. So in, uh, you know, in medicine, not only is it possible, and I know this because I do it and I work with other people that do it. We don't just manipulate things on a biochemical level, but we right. extrapolate from biochemistry into these electrical vectors and then also can measure all these uh, more, I don't want to say subtle because they aren't subtle, but you know right. what we would think of these other planes and, and uh, really dissect what's going on on those planes 
and, and create a coherence on those planes that then will filter down more readily into the physical form. So really about, you know, number one, creating fear, because that's the number one thing that will prevent you from really right. uh, growing your awareness. And then through that fear, making very poor decisions about what you might elect to put into your body. Right, right. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the Fully Optimized Health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to Fully Optimized Health dot com and sign up and i'll see and talk to you soon everything is frequency you know everything is energy and frequency and as you said mm -hmm. um the more they can create dissonance and incoherence in the fields of the collective consciousness of all of humanity the more they can control you know the amplitude of what they're ultimately attempting to do but let me just ask you i mean again your awareness of this is probably higher or as high as anybody that I've spoken to in this field is who is the enemy? Like, can we truly define the enemy? I mean, you know, you and I on our podcast, you know, we talked about, uh, I don't know why his name, every time I think about it, uh, you know, the Araman, right. But the guy in the, what, the early 19th century, I forget the guy's name, you know, the great author who talked about this. Steiner. You know, yeah. yeah. Steiner. God, Rudolf Steiner. For some reason, every time I talk to you, his, his name escapes me. Obviously, it doesn't help where I'm at right now mentally, but uh, who is the enemy? Well, I'd say look in the mirror, first of all, because uh, the only thing that's going to do us in is compliance. Totally. Because this is a war on the mental plane. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if they capture our mental processes, our mind, our belief system, which is what's happening then we turn on ourselves, we turn on each other. But, uh, you know, a lot of this would be hard to believe. And I'm kind of a real practical guy. You know, I was a sure. jock, I'm a farmer and, you know, and in medicine, I just want to know what works. And, uh, you know, you have to get results. But there are actually technologically assisted ways where you can verify the presence of interdimensional intelligence that has right. form on those dimensions. And right. there are subplanes, uh, you know, within those dimensions. And on one of these subplanes uh, lives this character, you know, that, um, that Steiner, Rudolf Steiner talked about, and it was Araman. Yeah. Now there was uh, another individual that incarnated in Asia a long time ago it's what a lot of people uh, refer to as Lucifer. Sure. So uh, other than going into, you know, belief systems that there's a guy with horns and a pitchfork, <laughs> Lucifer was behind the entire um, kind of consciousness of, uh, you know, spirituality being out of body experiences. Right. And right. that's why in Asia, a lot of those things are always, you know, seeking other realms rather than just being grounded here or grounding your spirituality here. And so that had a great influence. There are certain positive attributes of that. Now, there's another incarnation not that long ago, um, you know, and, and you can talk about who that was in physical form. It really doesn't matter, but it brought in the Christ consciousness. Sure. That is, sure. uh, you know, that the, the way, the middle way between the two extremes. And now what Steiner talked about was Araman, which is uh, the destroyer. You know, in Chinese medicine, we talk about the Shen and the Ko cycles. You want yep. equal amount of nurturing and destruction so that you have balance and regeneration. So Araman is pure destruction. And uh, these interdimensional beings, actually, you could take pictures of them with infrared photography and all sorts of things. You can see vehicles. There, there's a lot going on there all the time. Now, right. most of these interdimensional beings are unaware of us or don't care about us. Some of them are actually right. leaving breadcrumbs to, you know, for our benefit. But there is a class of these that Steiner referred to that are actually trying to interfere with us. And they have the ability, because of their awareness, to uh, directly access the mental plane of humanity. So the people that we see that are these leaders in these uh, 
you know, folks that we think are the villains, they are the most manipulated on the mental plane than all right. of us. They have been giving, given the technologies through this Aramon, if you want right. to talk about it, who, who certain people, uh, you know, we could name names, uh, you know, right. working in conjunction with CERN and, and, and things right. like that, where they're trying to bring in him as a physical incarnation and bring in their reign of terror, whatever they think that is. Right. Uh, so, so Aramon is manipulating the mental plane. And then these people are given the tools to manipulate us on the mental plane. And that's really the game we're playing right now. It's on that level. And if you're not aware of that, or if you think that's too far out, then you're really that much more vulnerable to what's going on in the first place. Because if you if you don't know what you're up against, you know you're not going to be able to protect yourself, and you're sure not going to find solutions. Yes, very well stated. This is an interdimensional spiritual war. You know, a war of the cosmos. I mean, you know, we we've been shown this again through various ciphers or portals in Hollywood. Uh, you know, with the shows, the light versus the dark. You know, Star Wars. You know, all these things. There's always been glimmers of like what is going on. But yes, it's it's a war for consciousness. It's a war for you know um, teaching people the value of resonance and love and goodness and peace and joy and contentment in that and grace versus the opposite. And that's kind of, you know, the purpose of living in the third dimension is it's a realm of, or a, a world of duality. And so to be in this realm, you're experiencing the opposite and the reverse polarity of each, you know, remember the hermetic axiom of the pendulum is always swinging, right? So good becomes bad and bad becomes good. Night becomes dark. Day becomes light. You know, it's the it's the understanding of that, you know, equal but opposite polarity. And and that's where people, you know, really are lost. You know, back to your point. If you don't, if you can't accept truth, um, then it doesn't matter. And you know, I love, you know, I think I said this on your guys' show, but I always go back to this that people have the right to remain asleep for as long as it entertains them. Right. And to attempt to awaken them when they're not ready to receive anything from you is an act of spiritual violence. And I think we're now, and I know you know this, and you, I think again, Mike and you and I were all talking about this on the last show, but there are a lot of newbies, you know, feeling this new cosmic energy that's washing across this planet in this golden age that we're currently undergoing, which I love you, love you and love that thought. Uh, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep that to my, for mine now credit to you, of course, but they're newbie awakened. And so they don't really have the discernment that someone who's been on the path a lot longer and has been through the ups and downs of this duality dimension. Um, so it's a lot harder for them right now to really truly like understand what's going on. So they're definitely, you know, on the cycle of ups and downs of, you know, darkness and despair, uh, as they find out more and more things, but do you think, uh, you know, going back to your point, and I know we have a bunch of bullet points to get to, but this podcast is profound and I want to ask you as many questions as I can. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you think that all will be revealed about everything, you know, everything that's been hidden from us, you know, the lies and the deception, the third dimensional aspect of existence. Do you think that in order to truly get to an age of light, and reason and higher consciousness. And again, love Do, does everything have to be kind of revealed, you know, that's been hidden. I, I would agree with that. And I would also say that it's already been revealed. It's For just a matter of, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, of course, looking with <laughs> eyes to see um, requires some responsibility, right? Because um, you might have to make some changes in your life, changes right. in your relationships, changes in your jobs. And, you know, that's why a lot of people are afraid to go there. You know, you mentioned polarity. Sometimes we kind of get into that light versus dark. But I like to default back to physics always because, you know, polarity against uh, is just uh, a polarization. It creates a, a resonance between the two polarities that then creates those vectors that play on our senses in the first place. So the reason why it's a thought-based universe to create those, uh, you know, electrical 
historical, uh, you know, phenomena so that we can play the game. Um, what we have to understand, it's not a matter of it's a bad thing being, you know, with these two polarities, but we have to remember that every pendulum that's going back and forth has to have a, a fulcrum. And we are that fulcrum. The fulcrum, of course, is still. And when you, uh, you know, uh, get rid of that inversion we're talking about, where the central awareness column is going from top down rather than the way it is now bottom up, then you are coming from that fulcrum of awareness. You are not identifying with either polarity and you are using those polarities to create exactly what you want. So you, there's no need to go into light versus dark. That's the game that we made up ourselves. And um, yeah, with, with people that really don't understand that these are very simple electric concepts, people like Walter Russell made them accessible for the Western mind. Uh, Rudolf Steiner took a lot of these uh, more occult concepts and made them accessible to the, for the Western mind because they knew we were entering into a new shift in consciousness, a new age, so to speak, not in new agey, but a new age, literally. Right. And that, uh, you know, all things needed to be revealed because if we don't know how the game is played, then how can we play it in the first place? So things have to be simplified. And when you're coming from that fulcrum, you're going to be less inclined to go into severe judgment about yourself, you know, right. when you you know, go into certain predictor or program behaviors or judge others. You know, you can just stay in that stillness and not be nudged and then be a solution here rather than just in the right left, um, you know, struggle that's just creating the chaos in the first place. It's crazy that you're talking about that, because as I told you before the show, and I'm happy to share it on the show, I'm, like, I'm tra always transparent and authentic. I have whatever this nonsensical, you know, radiation sickness or poisoning is this you know, energy poisoning of my field. And it's been horrible the last two days. I mean, like vertigo, inability to stand up, brain on fire, sweats. I mean, I, you know, thankfully have all the biohacking gadgets here. I have uh, infrared sauna, you know, a spa, <laughs> red light. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I got all the natural adjuvants. I have really smart friends like you in my life who can help me but man, as I was telling you, it really puts you in a bad place. And it's like, I would never, especially with all the work I do on myself, like, I got to tell you, Doc, as I was telling you off air, like, it really stops you from getting into stillness. Like, it's it's like an attack on your ability to, to go within. I mean, it's horrific. I don't want to, you know, we don't have to talk about it, but like now experiencing it firsthand and I... I've been doing an affirmation since January of 2020, which is I am healthy, whole, and complete, and I am immune to any dissonant frequency or form. And as you know, as I told you off air, and I'll share with the you know audience, when you're around you know 100,000 people who are most likely vibrating in dissonance, also you know you know it doesn't matter how strong your field is, you're going to resonate with that group construct, because I mean, you got to just hold that frequency so strong. And I was like all happy and elated. My team won and everybody was excited on the field. And so, you know, we're all hugging each other out, you know, and I don't know any of these people. And, and then, you know, being in that energy and obviously it's cold weather too in the Midwest, it was like five degrees, wind chill, 20 degree during the game and then flying back. And, you know, here, here I am. And thankfully I'm better now in three days. You know, I'll probably be perfect. Hopefully by Saturday, you know, knock on wood, but, uh, it's crazy. I mean, and to, you know, to your point, like I would never have thought any of those conscious thoughts because of, again, of my work and knowing all that stuff, you know, you talk about the fulcrum, but it's a whole different thing when you're under attack. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that attack or that frequency lasts a couple of days. But I mean, it, I'm grateful that I was able to do these shows today, especially with you, because the energy of resonance is back in through my bones now. Like I'm, you know, I'm going to, when this show ends and we're not close to ending, but when this show ends, I'm going to be like going back out into my backyard and like staring at the sun and being like, yes. Jay Campbell is back because I'm telling you doc. And I know you said you felt it last year. Uh, I mean, 
dude, <coughs> I wasn't me. And no matter what I did for those 36 hours, I could not get out of what I felt. It was like I said, it was like literally I was being blasted with a frequency cannon. Yeah. And, uh, but again, that's why we play the game. You know, we are here, I believe my belief system to achieve a certain level of mastery. And, you know, sometimes the further along the path that we get, that's when we're tested the most. <laughs> and, you know, we all know people that are stories of people anyway, that uh, live in a cave and they achieve so-called spiritual mastery, then they get kicked back out in the real world. And all of a sudden it's a whole different ball game, you know, even though they're very adept at meditation and all sorts of things. So this is where it's being played is in the outer world, right in the thick of it. This is game day right now. And, uh, you know, I would also, again, uh, go back to my jock background, liken it to going to a gym. You know, why do you go to a gym? Cause things are easy and light. No, you go there to test yourself uh, you go there because you can create resistance and then you get stronger when you work with that resistance. And that's exactly, uh, you know, what some of us are doing. A lot of people, of course, are feeling victimized and don't know what the heck's going on. But when you do know what's going on, you know, it, it may not be easy all the time. But, you know, a lot of us are kind of saying, OK, bring it on. Is that all you've got? Uh, right. You know, not being arrogant about it, because I've had experiences in my life that have brought me to my knees. But, you know, you always get back up and you use it as an opportunity. So I believe right now there is a slipstream going on that is easier to get into those higher dimensions than ever before. But also these challenges are, you know, necessitating that we get through a lot of of our past creations in order to, uh, you know, get there. So we're going to see a lot of challenges, a lot of us. And uh, also, uh, you know, we're going to have more of an ease of getting into these, uh, you know, mythical places of higher consciousness in the first place. Well, I will definitely tell you that what I experienced, and again, I'm knocking on wood and manifesting that the worst of it is gone. But what I experienced in the last two days was the worst physically manifested you know, illness experience of my life. Like mm -hmm. it was unbelievable. And again, the worst part was what I felt was like being inserted in my mind. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt that this is an unnatural thing. You know, anybody at this point who doesn't say this is some form of, you know, bioterrorism, you know, biological weaponry, again, frequency attacks, whatever you want to call it is just utterly clueless at this point, you know, I mean, yeah. it's not even debatable again, just based on my experience, but yes, everything to what you're saying is true. Um, you know, we have to have these challenges to rise beyond from entropy comes creation, but, but to your point, I, I, I want to ask you, and I know you answer, but I just want you to talk about it. Like the people who have chosen the path of dissonance, and I don't have to mention what it is they've done, but I mean, are we going to look at now a mass clearing? <laughs> of the population side of things on the world over the next two years. I mean, to truly get to the golden age, do we have to get to a place where the majority, because let's be honest, the people doc, as you know, this, and we talked about this on the alpha Vedic podcast because they, they create the reality that it does provide them uh, health and safety, even though you and I know that's not the case, but that's their conscious free will choice. You know, they're down here, right? They're in absolute fear. So isn't it stand, again, logically deductive reasoning to state that in order for the world to get to the new earth, the golden age, more light has to come in. And literally just, again, by deductive reasoning, more people in fear who leave automatically lets more light in. And the collective human vibration elevates to a place of the matrix ends. Well, we all recognize that we're all together unified. We're all one at a soul level. You know, these petty squabbles and differences that we have amongst each other over the most absurd things just ends. I mean, but do you kind of see that as the natural evolution where we are right now? 
I do. And, you know, in a lot of the teachings that I follow that, you know, go back through so many sources and then that were brought forth more contemporaneously through the Rosicrucians and through the sure. Theosophical and then through the Ascended Master teachings, they all just keep stepping up into current times. They all say the same thing about this exact moment time, which is for those who will be left. So they tell us that for not everybody is going to choose to stay here. And, you know, uh, I think I told you that over 25 years ago in the circles that I travel, uh, you know, we knew very well that at this moment, there would be a biological event because that would be the one thing that could catalyze their final plans. And, you know, people are more afraid of their mortality, uh, right. you know, than any other thing. So that's what's being played on right now. You know, we're talking about in the natural order, there's no such thing as disease or pathogens. And, and I'm more than convinced that's true through my own experience. For sure. But there are manufactured things. But those manufactured things that, you know, we would call, you know, little microbial creatures, um, they really need to be injected into you. Right. So um, the rest of us, you know, are, you know, going to have our challenges just dealing with the, the microwave frequencies and, and just the sea of energy that's been created around this. But um, the people that are, knowingly or just um, even unknowingly uh, doing these things, uh, changing themselves genetically, uh, tampering with, uh, you know, the grand design. Right. And as a functional capacitor, when they are exposed to these new, um, you know, larger universal influxes of light, for lack of a better term, it's literally – frying their nervous systems right so right. it's incumbent for each one of us who is making the choice to wake up um you know to really be able to receive that without it. you know it's not that this light is harmful but it's of a different more intense nature that if you're not ready for it it can create issues and it will create all of your dissonance uh you know to be amplified and brought right to the service so that is really what's going to be taking a lot of people out. And even for those of us that are choosing to, you know, just go for it and jump in with both feet, you know, we're having our challenges because yeah. we're going to feel that too, because we've all been programmed the same. We all bring in, uh, you know, a little bit of baggage or a lot of baggage from past embodiments. And that's why we're here is to clean it up. But at least that awareness allows you to know what's going on. So you can always see that light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, it's the ignorance that uh, causes the real pain and suffering. And uh, the thing that's the, the toughest, especially a lot of us that are caregivers and, and uh, you know, people that want to share truth is uh, watching other people make that decision. But like you already yeah. said, it's really none of our business in the first place. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. Well, we have to get to that level of awareness. And that's the problem with newbie awakened people is they want to share their truth with everyone. How can you not understand that so-and-so, right? So it's like that awareness that you and I share and a lot of people like us share is something that is learned. And we get to that level of awareness again through experience. And I know a lot of people really do, you know, they're well-intentioned, Doc. They really do want to help other people, you know, speed or hasten their awakening process, but you just can't. You have to let it naturally evolve. Again, it's, you know, I'm glad that I had really amazing mentors when I was younger who always told me that no one is interested. I'm sorry, nothing is interesting unless they're interested, right? Like I didn't have the spiritual precepts that I have now, but like that was kind of a basis of like really truly understanding that you can't ever teach anybody, you know? And then, you know, my wife used to say that 
nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. And so it's the <laughs> same thing. And so you understanding those precepts or those concepts, you just have to let people be where they are and be okay with it and not have judgment or condemnation. I did an amazing podcast, which by the way, you guys should have him on the Alpha Vedic podcast as soon as possible. Uh, if you haven't already, it's Udu Erasmus, the doctor, the, the essential. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dude. We haven't, but I, I'd love to okay, have him. I will connect you guys with him, but he is He's profound. Too. I mean, you guys will just be sitting there with your jaw on the ground listening to this guy. Great. He doesn't get a chance to talk about spirituality very much. And so when he did the podcast with me, he was just so excited and just, I mean, he let it all out. And I, you know, after the show was over, I was like, are you okay if I recommend you to other people who could appreciate your wisdom? And he's like, yeah, but I mean, nobody ever asked me to talk about this. <laughs> so I will connect you guys after the show, but, uh, but he, his comment was and I'll and I'll put it out there and I know we haven't even got to buy it into farming and we will because it's important but you know everybody in this path has a moment you know or seemingly you know under in in the in the stillness or in the quiet mind or whatever deep in meditation you know something happens to us but in his moment which he was 26 he said that some energy being came to him and told him in these exact words, I come not to judge, but to love, right? Profound statement. And that is right now the perfect statement for humanity, for all of us right now to aspire to. Because as you and I both know, and again, not everybody knows this, but we're going to see dramatic physical body expirations over the next two to three years already been programmed. There's already think tanks out there. I mean, they know all of this, you know, the, the, the population demographic people talk about the fourth turning you and I, and Mike talked about on your podcast that, Hey, it was no coincidence. A hundred years ago, we had the Spanish flu, you know, which was the Rockefellers. I mean, I won't say anymore else because this podcast is too brilliant and I don't want to say it, but I mean, there's always a mathematical equation you know, in a time dilation or sequence, you know, sometimes it's not linear. Oftentimes it is, but it's very clear for those with eyes to see what is going on. Um, can you kind of just talk before we get into bio into the farming component, can you kind of just give me or give the audience like an idea of like how much is society going to shift, transform, change with a much smaller population burden in the next say two to three to four years? So I think it's difficult for people to really be optimistic and think that it will shift in the first place. And, you know, to really understand that you need to go into how energy works. Mm -hmm. And if you can entertain that, there is a universal intelligence that keeps this entire realm in play and that it has certain functions and principles that when you align with them, you know, literal magic happens. And then in contrast, when you look at the overlays that we've been alluding to from this um, predator class, um, you know, it's really like fleas on a dog's back. And of course, they only become significant in your life, these overlays, uh, when you allow them and are unaware of them. So those, uh, even if it's a small minority of us on the planet that are starting to see through this, but aligning with the, the larger universal um, energetics, we'll say, then, you know, you're literally drafting the ocean compared to a few drops of water. Right. So you, myself and other kindred spirits, when we're tuning in in that way and bringing in literally being a conduit for that, those larger, you know, events, then uh, it's very, uh, um, you know, we'll realize that we're very close to a critical mass right. that will just create a complete reversal. In fact, there'll be some people that maybe are unaware of all this now, but because of different things, uh, you know, in, in other levels of their being, they'll be able to go along for the ride too. 
Right. And they'll wake up as if from a dream and just, uh, you know, think, oh, <laughs> I, of course, you know, I've always thought this way. So, uh, you know, we're a fraction of a second away from critical mass. Right. And we just have to understand there's much larger forces than these people that have hypnotized <laughs> us and that they have some kind of power themselves. Because the folks that have gone down that way, you know, into that, you know, that darkness, they have lost their tether with, right. you know, that whole creative force. That right. is why they have to feed off us. They can't generate it themselves anymore. So a lot of them know this. They, yep. uh, you, you know, they dislike us uh, because, number one, they know they're dependent on us for their lifeblood and at the same time want to demean us. So, right. um, you know, we are the ones, it's our life force that's making all this stuff we don't want happen in the first place. All we have to do is realize that. I, I don't know if I answered your question. No, all, you but, did. No, no, no. It's yeah. great. And, and uh, you know, the, we're going to get into biodynamic forming and the importance of it. I, I, you know, to your point, some people will just have introns, you know, latent DNA circuits just pop on. And you're right. It will be like they've been in a, a, a hallucinatory trance like state since birth. Cause again, a lot of people are connected to the human central computer, the collective unconsciousness. That's what it is, by the way, doc, it's the collective unconsciousness of unconsciousness. <laughs> How many people are truly unconscious of being unconscious? The majority is that. So there will be people you're right. That will just fire on and, you know, whether it's the luck of the draw DNA right place at the right time. They're around a bunch of people in resonance and they resonate with that higher vibrational aspect, that oscillation, who knows, but um, it is fascinating to think about. And, you know, I, I, I want to go back to something else you said too. Cause like, you know, I've read a lot of the ancient texts, uh, by the way, the Bhagavad Gita is a profound book. Like if anyone was to read that book right now, you would literally be seeing a, this is like a textbook play <laughs> of what's happening right now, right? So it's like there are all sorts of ciphers if you're inquisitive or, you know, just intellectually curious, which as you know, the technology aspect of this side of the what you call the predator class, the parasitics, energies, whatever, uh, they are trying to get rid of curiosity with our children, right? They want everything to be programmed, thought processes, you know, hey, Siri. Hey, Alexa. Hey, Google. You know, nobody thinks, nobody can discern. No one has any critical thinking skills, but um, it's out there. The information's out there. Um, I, I do think, I, I really do think though, the point that you made about if you're in dissonance, the, the energy field that is flowing across the planet right now is literally causing central nervous system disruption. You're exactly right. If you're in resonance, you're waking and you have more energy and more abundance and more prosperity and more acts of you know kindness in your life versus if you're down here, oh my God, it's hell. So the question is, and it's not really a question because we're going to get into the next point, but it's a comment is, is it is ultimately the biggest battle we have or the biggest hurdle to overcome to not go to war amongst ourselves? Because if you think about all of the people down here going nuts and then the people up here who are like, wow, abundance, is it going to be incumbent upon the people up here to contain the absolute zaniness of the people in victimhood? Yeah. And all we have to do is look at what they're trying to achieve right now. And on every yeah. level, they're dividing us amongst, uh, you know, a myriad of issues that didn't even used to exist. Yeah. So it's, it's all about dividing conquer. And then of course uh, that has to out picture within our own system where we become schizophrenic, you know, within our own being and have all these multiple parts um, you know, in it, uh, again, it all boils down to, you know, uh, I just wanted to emphasize this, a lot of the teachings that you're talking about and that I've talked about, including getting into like the original Masonic teachings before right. they were infiltrated, it was all uh, a, a very specific uh, way to understand us, the formula for rebuilding the temple, as they say right. in Masonics. But yes. the temple was the body. It was a human body because 
It's about our temple being a capacitor that has the ability to receive light from pure spirit. And when they divide us, fraction us, uh, fractionate ourselves uh, from each other or within ourselves, then that becomes, you know, very difficult and impossible. So that's what we're seeing right now. It's uh, divide and conquer. And uh, but again, all has been revealed. And, uh, you know, you mentioned being unconscious. Well, being asleep is one thing. But when you get to the realization that you are asleep, you're over the hump. That's exactly and at right. that very moment, your ascension has begun. Right. That's exactly right. You got to right. get there first. That's a beautiful comment. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So biodynamic farming, spagyric medicine, and our farm, your farm to pharmacy process um, at your personal medicinal herb farm. And spot is spagyric. Is that how you say that? Am I pronouncing that right? Spagyric. Spagyric. Okay. Lab. Now, before you talk about that, um, and we talked about this on Alpha Vedic. And again, I think this is very important. And you're going to laugh at this, by the way. Well, you won't, but majority of my audience might. So yesterday in my delusion, and I literally was what I felt hallucinating when my temperature was 105 and I was shaking and cold. Uh, I took a nap, sweated through my bed sheets. <laughs> and I literally had what was, I, I swear, Doc, it was like a lucid dream that my entire Jay Campbell, you know, fake persona, you know, physical existence unraveled. And I went and somehow my wife wasn't with me. I hope that doesn't, that's not an ominous forbearance, but she, my daughters and me were on a farm and we were literally, it didn't matter anymore. We were all there to contribute to the farm. And we all had a role on the farm and there was no money magic system or any of the bullshit that we all live in the, you know, the current system. And dude, it was so real. The first 10 minutes of, and again, I don't imagine this was more than a 20 minute dream because again, I was waking up and having hot flashes, but the first 10 minutes of the dream, I, 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 I promise you, doc, it was real. When I woke up and again, I was sweating and I was like, oh my God, soaking wet. I went and sat down on my toilet to just like literally find myself. I couldn't figure out if it was real or not. Like it, it what just happened to me? Did I, was I just like translocated in time or bilocated in time or what? I mean, it was so bizarre, but I say that because as we talked about on the Alpha Vedic, I mean, this might be where we're going, right? If there are two timelines the transhumanist timeline of the cyborg hive mind and then us, the sovereign, empowered, and free people. Isn't this where we're likely to go? And that's why biodynamic farming is more important than anything else? Uh, um, yeah, biodynamic farming for people that don't know is um, nothing more than mimicking nature, the way nature works and applying that to your agriculture. It's exactly what I did in medicine. And it's exactly what I do in the laboratory. Um, and, you know, when you understand, again, the physics behind it, you can also understand when these informational fields are compacting into what we consider physicality, and when you understand how that goes in both directions, it's radiating and dispersing and compacting at the same time, but it gives us our frame by frame, um, you know, uh, of what we think of as our physical reality, you know, the whole movie, it's literally, you know, like that if you understand how it works. But in that, um, in that whole scheme, it also explains how when information is stratified, it creates what we experience as a timeline. So when you are aware of that, you're no longer confined by time and you can go in both directions and create the future from the past and vice versa, because it's all happening simultaneously anyway. Right. But again, for the purpose of the experience, the timeline is helpful so that we connect certain cause and effect dots to in order to hopefully improve our behavior so when you're uh, working in the alchemical lab or out in the soil 
it's really helpful to understand this level of reality because not only are you doing the right things that will produce what you're trying to do, but you're also being able to perceive and communicate directly with those elementals in the vegetable and mineral kingdom right. that are more than communicative that will then when they are aware that you are aware um, then that allows magic to happen not just in your medicine but also in your agriculture and that's what we produce in a spagyric lab uh, you know we're we're taking things apart and and uh, being a conscious participant in the whole creation cycle and giving ourselves permission to do exactly what precipitates matter and reverse right there in the lab and then create some very special medicines at the same time. Like what kind of medicines are you creating now? Like, are you creating stuff that, you know, will heal or get you over this frequency, you know, weaponry that our cells are being invaded by? Yeah. And, uh, you know, in the spagyric lab, I do things that aren't for mass production or for the public, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it, they can't be mass produced because it takes such a long time to make them. But let's just say that you um, have a plant. Now you can do the same thing with minerals. In fact, mineral spagyrics are very, very powerful, but plant medicine, uh, rather than just say taking an herb with a, um, with a particular property that you think might be good for your cardiovascular system or such, some such thing. Uh, the alchemists understood just like our being and our whole evolutionary process, there's three components. You have the mercury, what we call, consider the spirit. That's the animus, the prana, the chi, whatever you want to call it. Right. You have the sulfur, which is the soul, which is our individualized consciousness in this experience. And you have the salt, which is the body. So in a, in a spagyric lab, you take a plant and first you extract the spirit. And just like in a human embodiment, you're going through this process where experience after experience, embodiment after embodiment, and you go through a purification, a distillation process. You get to, you know, examine different parts of yourself and then at the end have a you know, all the parts purified, and then you put them back together as a whole. And now you are a pure mind, body, and spirit acting in unison. In the spagyric lab, we'll do it with minerals and plants. So we'll take, um, you know, instead of just tincturing something in alcohol and getting the essence, the soul out of it, you know, more like essential oils, sure. we take the plant and uh, I'll just do the cliff notes because it gets a little more involved. Sure. Um, you make a wine and then you distill the wine, you rectify it, you do all these things that chemists know how to do. And now you have a, uh, a very strong alcohol, which is the spirit. That's why they call it spirits when you go to the liquor store. That's how you see a lot of terminologies we use today are from those old alchemical days. Right. So now you have right. the spirit of the, of the plant and now you use that spirit to distill and uh, extract the essence, the, the sulfur, the essential oils from the plant. And then you go through a lot of processes with that and you purify that part, you know, the essence. And then you um, take the spent plant matter, you kiln it, you put it through uh, an incineration and you're left with just the minerals. Now what people don't understand is those mineral salts is what makes the plant work on the physical level, because those are the capacitors that receive the resonance from higher realms that then create the form and the function. So the thing that makes, um, you know, one herb work different than another herb is it has a different mathematical formula and proportion of those salts. So we purify the salts, then we put all those three components back together now you have a very powerful medicine that is not only going to create the capacitor ability on the ground to coalesce proper function and geometry but you're also going to have those uh, two other elements the the soul for the soul and the spirit that is going to work on those same levels of your being so when you take that kind of medicine it is operating on all levels of your being than just uh, you know one extrapolation of one of those mediums or the other. So it's very, very powerful medicine and there's all sorts of other preparations. That's just the very basic thing that we, we do. 
And then if you happen to actually grow those things yourself, that is part of the alchemical process. It is very powerful when you go from farm to lab. And that's why uh, you'll see a lot of our media in the near future. We call it uh, farms to pharmacy. And we have a whole cooperative of different people where we're working and showing people how to go through that whole process. I mean, that's amazing uh, to me. I mean, I'm fascinated and I want to get more involved, but like, are there any limitations to what you're doing? You know, to, I mean, can you create this stuff and then ship it or does it all have to be local as far as the preparation to, to use? No, you can ship it. It lasts well over time. In fact, things, uh, some of these preparations actually age like a fine wine and actually right. get more powerful, you know, over, over time. Um, the, the one limitation is, um, you know, you can't really reproduce this thousands of bottles at a time because then you lose that whole alchemical, understanding that the practitioner or that the chemist is uh is just an inseparable part of the process and in uh, alchemy it was considered you know back in the day alchemists uh, were considered the highest uh let's just say form of spiritual practice right because you are taking a physical endeavor but then uh, using it to mirror your own internal processes. And if you're not resonating on that level of understanding, you're going to have limitations in the lab as well. So what we're trying to do is just at least bring these understandings forth and then uh, understand through a central decentralization process, uh, you know, we're creating a little prototype here of, you know, how to farm properly and how to, you know, make preparations, how to grow your own food even, but then uh, have a duplicatable, just sort of five to 10 acre sort of prototype so that people can come here and learn and then go duplicate that, you know, in every county and every town. And, you know, so that's the only way to really make this high level of resonant medicine available is when we just have more people. Think about how many doctors there are out there in the world. What if those doctors went to real medical training? Right. And what if they also started by farming to figure out how things grow in the first place, how the life processes actually work. And then, you know, in the same amount of time that they go through to learn how to poison people, they could learn how to make these things and you would have ample remedies and types of medicine and practices to service the entire planet. And the coolest thing is the more this happens, it will elevate the consciousness of all of mankind to the point where we don't need doctors or medicines in the first place. So I'm on your website right now as, as you're talking, I'm looking at alphavedic.com. Um, you've got so much stuff. I mean, I guess I have so many questions. Maybe it's better for another podcast. We can talk about the products, but you know, from sure. a high level summary, how could a person like me, other influencers, like what, what could we do to serve you at our highest and best capacity to get the Alpha Vedic brand, the co-op, you know, more people, as you said, you know, allopathic clinicians involved. I mean, what would you say is the best way for, you know, again, someone like me, and there are many others like me now, thank God, uh, that can help you guys. Well, the, the best help is what we're doing right here. We're just sharing information. And That's for right. people that resonate on this level, uh, just those kinds of open minds are creating the shift. And that's our whole purpose. Now, we have a permaculture model. And the permaculture, of course, is a design where you work with the land and, you know, you give back to the land. So you're creating a kind of a seven generational effect of making sure that, you know, generations down the road are going to have healthy topsoil and we're not just doing it at the expense of everything. And then in the permaculture, uh, you know, loop, uh, we take a lot of the things we grow, we make products out of them. And then that, you know, sustains the whole loop so that that can, you know, in the present world, uh, you know, refinance so we can, you know, go do it another year. So, um, yeah, our, our website is the only reason why we've, uh, created that level of commerce, you know, so we fill that cog of the permaculture wheel. But, uh, you know, our main mission is about sharing information and, uh, you know, the products that we do uh, are, you know, model our philosophy and, uh, you know, is, is just more than anything to illustrate what we're really about and that this is duplicatable 
And, you know, so if anybody wants to go to the website, um, you know, or just uh, listen to our podcast, that's uh, amazing support. Doc, man, this is such a profound podcast. Um, I mean, I'm so grateful and humbled that you were able to come on the show today. And I'm so grateful that I did not. The energy of the universe inspired me to keep going, knowing when I'm not at my uh, at my tip top. But uh, I mean, you you provided so much information. I mean, there was one bullet point we talked about it in, independently, but there was one other bullet point, which is the path to sovereignty directly translates to our personal biology. I mean, clearly we've talked about that, you know, indirectly many times already in this podcast. But I want you to kind of have the final thoughts on just that statement. But then also. Uh, you know, before the show, when the show's over, I want to talk to you about how I can help you guys. Uh, I, I mean, I'm all in on this now, uh, especially after doing this podcast with you and spending some time, you know, getting much deeper with you. But just that last statement on the path to sovereignty, just maybe expound a little bit on that. Sure. You know, sovereignty, boy, you can go as deep as you want, but we were intended to be a nation of sovereigns without subjects. That was the original intention of the Republic. And when we go back to our physical vehicle, when we are made to be afraid of ourselves or just waiting for the inevitable shoe to drop in old age where we're going to get something when we're a certain age, uh, you know, that is the opposite of sovereignty. And the opposite of sovereignty is when we believe that there is an earthly authority that has the right to tell us what to do or to steal our energy in any way. So it really is a spiritual battle where we, I don't even like to call it a battle, but it's a realization right. process where we discover who we really are. And sure. when you understand that, you also realize that you are the authority of your own universe. You have been endowed with that free will, you know, divine right. Nobody can take that from you. And when that happens, even when there's this other nonsense going on out in the world, uh, you find that you're you're protected in a certain way and that things really start manifesting in your favor. And just like any sovereign, you know, as we think about them historically, they pretty much get their way all the time. But we can do the same thing, only it doesn't have to be the expense at the expense of somebody else. And in fact, true sovereignty is facilitating that sovereignty consciousness in all of our fellow you know, people. Yeah. And everybody, you know, that's the, the issue is we're all equal. And that's so hard to say that and to see that and to not have condemnation, judgment, you know, labeling when you are more consciously aware of the people that aren't. And that's been my greatest gift slash challenge is to, to recognize that, you know, like I said, that statement, that uh dr erasmus gave me which is i come i come not to judge but to love if we can all just live on that statement especially right now where there's just so much fear and so much uh dissonance and incoherence in the collective consciousness of people i mean you know this right like when you go out in public and thankfully you're pretty isolated which is a great place to be nowadays but you know you get the looks from people, whether you're wearing a mask, not wearing a mask. I mean, it's just what, what is the dissension that has been created amongst the human ranks in the last two years is just, it's mind blowing, you know? And so you have to be able to go out and again, be the master and just, you know, keep your vibration at a level of pure resonance and nothing will disturb you. And, you know, you obviously you can project that in front of you too, and you keep that field and you won't be disturbed. You know, it's, it's, it's mind blowing, but you know, you said the words alchemical and I really, I know we talked about this on your show, but I really think that all of us now are truly alchemical masters now, you know, teaching the, the, um, the learnings or the enlightened knowledge and awareness of the masters of the ancients. Right. And now we're becoming, stepping into the fold of like who we once were in a past life. Or I, I love what you said, the word embodiment. Um, but now it's time, man, like it's time to shine as bright as possible and to put forth, you know, the, the information and the knowledge that, you know, you're doing, I'm doing again, you know, Mike is doing, there's tons of us, thank God there's tons of us now. Uh, and then it's of course, you know, aligning with those people. Cause I, you know, honestly, doc, as I told you on the last show, I, I really think that 
the most important thing that we can all do right now is yes, share the knowledge and the awareness that we have, but to align ourselves. Because the more of us aligned, the brighter, the stronger the energetic field of resonance becomes, you know, the more light is let in, as you said earlier. And that's the gift. The gift is the more light. I mean, you know, what, what is it? Uh, all, all the, all the darkness is, is the absence of light. So the more light, there can't be darkness. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just, it's getting to that point of awareness and, and, and understanding that. And so the more people that we can bring together aligned, congruent to the energy of the light, the resonance of light, that's the solution. Absolutely. And the proof is in the pudding. You know, if you look at all of us that are doing this, we all get along pretty good. There's, uh, I don't see competition between the parts. Uh, we actually have fun talking to each other. And, uh, and, and the most wonderful thing is if you look at your podcasts and the number of, uh, similar podcasts out there, the numbers of people that are turning in tuning into your message is uh, much greater than folks that are tuning into the legacy media. They're right. dying on the vine. That's absolutely so, true. Yeah. So that's why I look at, you know, I remember back not that long ago where we'd actually have to go offshore and behind closed doors to talk about certain <laughs> things. And we get busted by the FBI and I've got frequent flyer miles with the FBI myself. And, um, you know, now, uh, I mean, even though the internet is censoring, uh, we're still talking a lot more openly than I was able to 40 years ago. Yeah. So that's why I'm very optimistic. You should be. And again, man, you are a pioneer in this and all of us walking this path. owe you a, a, a level of, you know, a debt of gratitude that I really can't comprehend. And like I said, it's a, it's a true honor of mine to have you on my show today. I mean, I'm kind of humbled. It's, I'm a, it's a fanboy moment. Uh, cause you really are a legend, man. And, and, and like I said, like, it, you know, it took your character is just so unbelievable because, you know, when you started going forward again, as a clinician, you know, as an allopathic trained clinician to do what you did in the time that you did it, man, it took unbelievable courage. I mean, I, I mean, most people can't even comprehend, you know, probably the battles that you fought and waged, uh, you know, in becoming who you became, but I mean, we're all you know, indebted to you doing that. And I'm grateful, you know, and God, I can't even imagine how many ways. And uh, I'm just grateful again that I was able to share today. And I know there'll be many more experiences. So let me just say that, you know, for all of the people that follow the Jay Campbell podcast, please go to alphavedic.com, get involved in the mission, sign up for the co-op, get involved in the community, uh, buy supplements. Doc, I will definitely have you back again and we will do a show on all your supplement brands. And we can talk about, you know, all the, uh, the ergogens and the potentialities and all the amazing things that those supplements do. I don't, it's, I, I don't want to, you know, give you like two minutes and say, Oh, break down all these things. It's, there's too much great stuff you have on your site. So we'll talk about it before, but, uh, let me just say again, I'm so humbled to have you here today. Uh, is there anything that you would like to say before we end the show? Uh, you know, I think we've said it all, but just, uh, again, thanks. And I'm honored, you know, by your kind words and, um, you know, in years past, I didn't really look at things as an act of courage. I was, I probably just, uh, didn't know, uh, any better what I was getting myself into. So one thing left, uh, you know, led to another and, and here we are and we live in different time periods and you're paving the way, uh, you know, as all of us do. So, uh, you're doing the same exact thing and, and I have the same appreciation for you. So thanks for having me here. Thanks, Doc. I mean, it's amazing. And I, I received that. And thank you so much. So again, guys, go to alphavedic.com and remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.